So let's talk about homeschooling. Hi, it's Miss Andrea, and let's talk about your college prep game plan. Um, so in the last video, we discussed um, homeschooling through high school, the, the should you do it, the why uh, you might want to do it, the why I, the why I wanted to do it, um, and etc. And so once that's established, part halfway through middle school usually, then um, you don't want to relax in that. You want to start ramping up your game plan um and so this is what we're going to talk about today i need to turn off all these chimes and i literally don't know how to not have pop-ups on my computer making that noise so i'm gonna have to learn another new thing today um oh speaking of learning new things um, I spent yesterday night, last night, going through all my YouTube videos and adding um, subscribe box and a box to show you my latest video so that no matter what video you clicked on, you would get my latest video. And actually, I didn't do that for all my videos. I did that for one page worth, so maybe like 25, and then I went back into my more popular videos from six to ten years ago and did those also um if you go to my page you'll see that there's some really out of place looking videos there because those videos were recorded um 10 ish years ago and um for some reason or another i hid them probably because of the comment section probably because i don't know i just thought they were a little goofy um and so a few of those i i republished and i thought that they, they would republish back in the timeline uh where they were but they republished as of yesterday so it looks like i'm spamming youtube um and uploaded four uh videos yesterday i did not i um made one video yesterday but i republished um three very old videos looking at my old videos and looking at my new videos is it weird to say that i'm wondering if one's head gets bigger as they age i have weird thoughts anyway so we're talking about starting to discuss um the college game plan halfway through middle school and here's kind of how we went about it. I mean, basically, I just nagged the children. Um, what do you like? This activity that you're doing right here, what do you think of it? How much do you enjoy it? This activity that you're doing here, what do you think about it? How much do you enjoy it? So what do you think about this math? Um, you know, could you see yourself doing math for the rest of your life? Could you see yourself um, diving into science for the rest of your life? Could you see yourself acting for the rest of your life? Could you see yourself programming for the rest? Every little thing they did. Could you see yourself fencing for the rest of your life? Every little single thing they did, I tried to climb in their brains with them and, 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 be, and kind of make a barometer, you know, of their like and dislike for that particular subject and what could come of it because I wasn't playing what do you want to be when you grow up or oh, an astronaut okay so you want to be an astronaut you know you roll out a scroll these are the things you have to learn to be an astronaut are you interested in any of these things no so like we didn't daydream we dreamed for real you know um my daughter you know loves acting and she also had an obsessive need to be in charge of the costumes that went on the stage in the homeschool program. So um, I was like, so you seem to love acting. 
do you want to do this for the rest of your life? No, I don't want to do it for the rest of my life because I don't really want to be famous, but I want to work on the stage. Um, as in, I want to be an actor, but I don't ever want to be like the star. I always want to be a background actor. Okay, I, I see. So, so how are we going to go about it? You know, what classes are we going to take? You know, uh, and, and at one point she said, oh, I'm going to work in theater. I don't know if I'm going to go in the front door or the back, but I'm going to work in theater. And I'm like, the back door? Yes, the back door. So what do you do in the back door? You know, you design sets, you build sets, you costume, you know, you do box office, you do all those things. There's a lot of work, you know, backstage. And a lot of it pays more, at least, you know, the first 10 years in that industry than acting does. It's like, oh, so what of, what of these backstage things do you like the most? Um, costuming. Oh, so let's get on the internet and find out what education you need to be a costumer and just basically what you need to know. Um, and my daughter despised math so much because, I mean, math was instinctual for her up until a certain point, but when we started adding letters, she, she, she literally got mad and she was like, this is ridiculous. I don't know why they're adding letters here. We don't need them. You know, she just, it just, it just grated, um, against her. And, you know, when we're looking at what you need to be a costumer, you know, math is important, especially like the geometry and trig type things. And so I show this to her and she sighed and said, well, then I'll do the math required, you know, for those subjects and no more. Now, I wasn't really going for that because I wasn't going to do algebra, geometry, trig. I knew that, you know, people changed their minds that we needed some algebra two in there. So I lied and I said, okay, well, before you can do geometry, you have to do algebra two. That's the rule. <laughs> That's the way it goes. And, you know, so she grinned and bared it and she did algebra two and then she got to do her geometry and trig. And then I told her I had lied and she was angry, but it was done. So anyway, so basically you nag your children to death. You look at everything they're doing. You ask them how much they enjoy it. You, you see how they procrastinate in doing the work or how fast they get the work done. You know, if you, if you have to leave me alone, stop asking me questions, child, then you just give assignments and you see how much enthusiasm, you know, those subjects come back with or how much the children drag their feet. Your, your children's likes and dislikes will reveal themselves as will your children's giftings. If they're gifted with, in math, it will reveal itself. If they're gifted in verbal things, it will reveal itself. If a child is gifted in verbal things, they're also probably going to see um, a huge interest in history type things. And if they're gifted in math, you're going to also see um, a lot of success in science. Don't expect your child to be great at all of them. The human brain isn't wired that way. Kids who are in public school and do good in every single subject are good students. But they're not exceptional students in any area that's going to take them through the rest of their lives. I'd rather see a child be mediocre in math and science and off the chain in language arts and history than be great at all four of those things and not know what they want to do. I'd rather have a historian than someone who just doesn't know, you know, what they want to do. Anyhow, so we've nagged our children, we've harassed our children, we've watched our children. We looked at the quality of their assignments. We looked at how hesitant they are to complete their assignments or how enthusiastically they complete their assignments. And we start to just write down things and make notes. And we present these back to these children. And don't forget, they're middle schoolers. So, you know, you wait for a moment when they're open to conversation and you go back into the conversation again. Okay, and, and you kind of use that to determine the direction for each child. Um, by the halfway point in middle school, it was pretty clear that the girl um, has a heart for things political, has a strength in all things verbal, 
um, and has a passion for the arts. Um, and that may seem spread out, but where we've come round circle to is she's writing for theater, she's costuming for theater, she's doing the theater thing, and she is so into history because that comes back down from writing because she's more of a storyteller. So, you know, it all, you know, came together. Um, and the boy was just a natural programmer. Um, oh, and be careful of letting other people speak your child's giftings into them because it was clear that my son was a natural programmer in a middle school and a high school co-op teacher got hold of him and kind of pushed him more into graphic design because, you know, I'm an artist, he had a natural inclination to art, the whole family's natural inclination to art. And he went to college for graphic design and didn't have a great first year, um, switched colleges, um, did something a little bit more computer centered. Um, and then end of year two, took a computer science, a programming class and it all came rushing right back. Like he just has a natural inclination for coding and programming. So, so be careful of letting people change your children's mind. I've always had the idea from when my children were very small that it was my job to watch and see, you know, who are they going to become and not to try and influence that onto my children. But yet someone else who, you know, had been a graphic designer and didn't end up working with graphic design except for teaching homeschool co-op, convinced my son that he was a graphic designer and he had a, he had one and a half pretty tough years um, because he got off his own track. Anyhow, so your child's seventh-ish grade and, and you have a good sense of who they are. You, you've asked all the questions, you've done all the things. Um, so now you want to start, you know, you're getting your child into a college mindset and you're starting to literally discuss colleges um, you go on the college board you look at colleges um, you talk about colleges different people are in you talk you talk about the athletics of the college you talk about what the college's strengths are um, middle school both kids kind of want to go to SCAD because it's a it's kind of an, uh, an Atlanta institution for the arts and they were both you know kind of art centered um, by the time we got closer, I think the, the board did apply to SCAD because of the whole graphic design deal. Um, SCAD fell off the list, but you know, it's important to try things and start looking at colleges early. I think my daughter was oh, 12 or 13 when we stopped at the first college, we were going to Auburn university to look at that for my son and on the way home was a little college and we were like oh we've never seen this college before it's midday on a Tuesday let's pull in and we went in and we toured Wesleyan College for Women and it was just neat and cool and we found out about camps that the college had any college that your child shows a little bit of interest in if they have a camp send them to the camp I mean, it's it's a really good way to find out, you know, if it's it's been, if it's an atmosphere your kids are going to be comfortable in, and if it's something they're interested in. Um, long story short, my daughter ended up at that college that we accidentally found, um, and my son ended up doing two colleges that didn't happen at that point, but just happened. You know, we eventually found them. Um, so, so now you've got a game plan. Now you've started peeking at colleges. Now you've started figuring out what your kid likes and what your kid doesn't like. Um, college board is really helpful here because if you go on college board and start putting in colleges based on geographical distance from your house, um, uh, subjects, your child, your child's majors, your child is interested in. You also get things like how big the college is, how small the college is, um, racial makeup of the college, um, every little 
thing. And you can, at this early age, you know, even start narrowing down college based on things that fit your children's personality. Both of my children ended up going to pretty small colleges, which is not at all unusual for someone who's been homeschooled. Okay, so now we're talking college, we're exploring colleges, the conversation's gotten comfortable. We just mention it at breakfast, you know, once a week at most, you know, because they're still in middle school and they have things to figure out. Um, now here's where we start setting discipline and expectations. Um, child doesn't hand the assignment. You, you say to them, you know that you won't get away with this in college. You know we're going to have to start meeting deadlines and timelines you know, if we're ever going to get to that college goal that we've set and the children are now very excited about. Um, and you, you just start tightening up the expectations. You start tightening up the timelines. You stop giving extensions. You start giving a lower grade for late papers. A homeschool doesn't have to have an A in every subject. As a matter of fact, that just looks suspect to colleges anyway. So, you know, you have to... Stop being soft on the kids. And it is hard to not be soft on your children. It is hard. Um, and so so that's kind of it. And I'll just recap because that was a lot. Um, so, so we're starting the college prep game plan by trying to determine the direction of your child based on their likes, their dislikes how they perform in each subject, their enthusiasm for the subject, um, their thoughts about what they want to do in the future. You start getting your child into a college mindset. You go to the colleges. You start talking about it all the time. You start dreaming. Just start daydreaming, you know, about the colleges. You try out things. You go to camps at different colleges um, just so your child gets a feel for different kinds of campuses. Um, there are, there are science Olympiad things, there's summer writing courses, there's even sleepover weeks. There's all these things that different colleges have, and then they'll give your child a feel for what they like and don't like about different types of colleges. And you go to college board and you plug in the majors that your kids are thinking about and you, and you cross match that with, um, college sizes, college demographics, college costs you know, and all of those wonderful things. And you start tightening up on expectations for your child, setting deadlines for assignments, making sure they hand things in on time, making sure that they're responsible. And, and we're going to start moving them toward being responsible for their own education. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of peeks into our upcoming videos. One of them was starting with ninth grade beginning of the school year, I handed my children a syllabus. And then I went on to a Google Calendar and I wrote a calendar on what they were going to do each day. And um, when they finished an assignment, they emailed it to me. And so I just kept email folders and I documented all their work that way. And then when it was time to graduate, printed it all out, organized it, and had a killer homeschool portfolio. But I jumped really far ahead. Um, what we're going to discuss next time is this. Can you see that? So we have each grade and then we have the subjects down the side. You'll notice I have grade 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And I have two lines for each subject. Um, I said before... Um, a good stringent uh, high school program that'll get your children to most colleges will consist of two of the the core met two math two English two science two social studies excuse me four four of each of the core four math four English four science four social studies and at least two language arts the same language you know um, like Spanish one, Spanish two, and they can go further than that. Um, and then I have a line for two, a couple lines for arts, and I have a couple lines for miscellaneous. As a homeschooler, and as anyone who wants to go to, for example, Yale, 
um, you have to go over and above. But what you don't have to do is go over and above in every subject. Every line here does not have to be figured out, filled out, okay? Um, math, for instance, might have four, you know, you know, um, say they do algebra, geometry, algebra two, trig, calc. Say they do all that in math. Um, they might do five Englishes too, but then they might go back and take a, a English course outside of the house, like Shakespeare or maybe something on dystopian novels or something. So a homeschooler might, you know, have eight um, English spots filled out, or they might not. Um, they might have the bare minimum science. They might have twice as much social studies as they need. Um, in my kids, in my daughter's case, her art section had as many credits as her core section because of all the different art she took, all the theater classes, Shakespeare, um, tech, like you name it. For my son, there was programming and, and photography and camera, you know, um, light set, all of that. So his um, arts, his, no, his miscellaneous was had as many credits as his core. Um, it's going to be an interesting puzzle um, and it's going to be fun figuring it out and what I'm going to do and it's going to take a while and I really want you all to bear with me when I'm done I will have a workbook ready to go what we're done is we're going to go through each of these squares and talk about all the different ways um, we can fill out those squares to give your kids a killer a high school experience and a killer homeschool portfolio. Uh, do you want a hint? Okay, um, for one homeschool I worked with, social studies, grade nine consisted of three Eagle Scout badges. Um, for another person, um, social studies, let's say grade 10, consisted of um, a summer of like geological exploration. Okay. Um, same child might have a year of American history from a textbook. Um, and then the same child might turn around and take a CLEP exam that they've kind of gleaned all this knowledge just by living and breathing and doing homeschool type things that they can pass a, a college level social studies test. Okay, that's all I'm going to give you now because we're really going to work through all of these squares and how to fill them out and how to make this college portfolio dynamic. Okay, so until next time.